my invisible friends on the far side of the screen welcome back to our series on electrical engineering tonight we talk about filters this is an introductory lecture on filters filters is a vast field we're only scratching the surface for the sake of my elect to two students as second year students of electrical engineering here at ubc what is a filter? Well, very often, when a signal arrives at the user, it has been mixed up with other undesirable signals. If those other signals are of a different frequency than the one we want, they can be removed, they can be filtered out. The network that does the filtering is called an electric or electronic filter. It stops or removes signals of specific frequencies. That's what it does. For instance, the radio signals of all the stations in the area arrive together at the antenna of our receiver. We use a filter to remove all the other radio station signals and keep the one that we want to listen to. With filters, one thing is what we want and another is what we get. What we want is an ideal filter. What we want is a brick wall kind of filter. What do I mean by that? Imagine this, you remember that the output of a transfer function is the input x multiplied by the transfer function itself, h. If the value of the magnitude of the transfer function h is 1, then whatever input x comes in appears on the output unchanged. But if the value of the transfer function for that frequency is 0, then no matter what is the value of the input x at that frequency, that signal will not appear in the output. That signal will be filtered out of the output. That is a plan that is an ideal filters plan. Graphically, we can represent that on this drawing. The vertical axis is not in decibels. It is in units. It can be either a zero or a one. The horizontal axis is um, in radians per second and it's also linear it's not logarithmic that is a characteristic of an ideal filter for frequencies between 0 and omega p the value of this transfer function is 1 those signals of those frequencies will pass through the filter as if the filter was transparent but signals of frequencies above omega p will be completely nullified they will be eliminated deleted filtered the range of frequencies that pass through the filter is called the passband, and uh, the range of frequencies that are rejected is called the stop band. Between them, we have the cutoff frequency, also called the edge of the passband, or the threshold frequency. Observe that uh, the transition region between passband and stop band is vertical, like a brick wall. That happens only in an ideal filter. There is a clean cut between passband and stop band. In a real filter, that transition is gradual in a real one. What we have here is an ideal low-pass filter because it passes low frequencies. This other one is an ideal high-pass filter. And we could also have an ideal band-pass filter or an ideal band-stop filter. Let's see if that is what we want. Let's see what we get. What we get is a real filter, something like that. That is a low-pass real filter. Observe that the transfer function value in the passband is not constant. It is changing. How much is it changing? What we tolerate during design. That is the design parameter. We say, hmm, I will tolerate only 2 decibels of change of the of the transfer function in the passband more than that i am not in the passband anymore it is a design decision that is called the a max tolerated the a max together with the curve the blue curve defines what is the edge of the passband omega p we draw that red line at the bottom of a max intersect that with a characteristic in blue and the intersection gives us omega p the edge of the passband in the same way in the stop band ideally we would have an infinite rejection we say oh, infinite wasn't that zero it's zero right but in decibels 20 times the logarithm of zero is negative infinity 
So the rejection in the stop band in an ideal filter is infinite. But in a real filter, we say, well, we don't have infinite rejection, but at least give me a minimum uh, number of decibels of rejection, 20, 25, 30, um, 40 decibels of rejection. That is called the aiming, the minimum, the minimum required um, attenuation in the stop band. Uh, again, at the bottom of a mean, we draw a horizontal line like this, right? That is barely visible. And the intersection with the blue curve gives us what is omega s, what is the edge of the of the stop band, the beginning of the stop band. Please observe that in a real filter, omega p, the end of the pass band, and omega s, the beginning of the stop band, are not the same frequency. There is a range of frequencies that we call the transition band. The better the filter, the narrower the transition band. Let's write down all the parameters that we have mentioned here. A max, the maximum tolerated variation of the filter in the pass band. It is a design decision. 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3 decibels. It's up to the designer how much constancy is required for that application. Omega P is the edge of the pass band and it's closely related to a max a minimum a min is a minimum attenuation required in the stop and band and omega s is the edge of the stop and band between them we have the transition band the width of the transition band is um, represented with the selectivity factor omega p divided by omega s a number that is less than a one the closer to one, the better the filter. Let's have another example here. This is less dramatic, but it's a real filter. It's um, a, a low-pass filter as well. In that low-pass filter, we're given a max, and we draw at the bottom of a max that red line. Intersect that with the actual blue curve of the filter's transfer function, and with that, we obtain what is omega p. In this case, omega p is 4,000 minus 800, um, that is uh, 3,200 uh, radians per second. The horizontal axis here is radians per second. All right. And uh, for a minimum, the minimum tolerated um, attenuation in the stop band, let's do the same. We draw a horizontal line for a, at the bottom of a mean, intersect that with blue curve, and find what is omega s, which in this case is 40,000 radians per second. We can find the selectivity coefficient or factor with those numbers. So you see how closely it's related a max is to omega p and a min is to omega s. They go together. In the passband filter, we can also identify a max and omega p and omega s and a min. The difference is that now we have two edges to the passband omega p1, omega p2, and the same with the stop band omega s1 and omega s2. We can specify the type of a filter depending on what part of the spectrum the filter stops or removes. We can have, for instance, a low-pass filter with a characteristic like this one, or a high-pass filter, or a band-pass filter, or a band-stop, band-reject filter. Classification by how steep the transition band is. For a transfer function like that with only one pole, the transition band has a slope of negative 20 decibels per decade. That is a low-pass filter with that transition band. We call that a first-order low-pass filter, 20 decibels per decade. If we added another real pole at A, like in this case, then the transition band would be steeper and we would have a second-order low-pass filter. So you see, we can classify the filter by the part of the spectrum that it passes and also by how steep the transition band is. I insist on the close relationship between Amax and the edge of the passband omega p. Let's, let's look at that with the first order low pass filter, this one. The edge of the passband could it be A, just a corner, just a pole of the transfer function? Well, not really. But if they don't give us a max in the problem, yes, we assume that the corner is the edge of the passband. Uh, that is an approximation. 
Now, if they give us a max, we have to use the exact curve, not the approximation given by Bode. And then we intersect the bottom of a max with the actual curve to find where is omega p. If a max is more than three decibels for this first order filter, then omega p is on the right of the corner. If a max is less than three decibels, like now, omega p would be on the left of the corner. You do the math. If it's exactly three decibels, it's approximately the corner's value. For a second order low pass filter with two real poles at the same corner A like this one, the actual curve takes a dive much earlier and then the intersection with the bottom of a max happens much earlier. Well, shouldn't say earlier because the horizontal axis is not time at a much lower frequency than A. That is what I should say. Tutorial time, the time we were uh, waiting for. We are told that the circuit on the right is a filter. I have several questions for you to work on. Find the transfer function. You say, well, that is easy. And then do a quick body amplitude plot of it to find what type of filter that is. From that one, say what type of filter, and also find the approximate h of the passband omega p in radians per second. And then after that, uh, then we are told that the maximum tolerated variation of the attenuation of the passband, quite a mouthful, right? A max is 1.5 decibels. That is a max, that is a tolerated um, uh, variation in the passband for the, uh, for the magnitude of its transfer function. What is the actual omega p in this case? Well, it works like that. Find the transfer function. You remember that from transfer functions a while ago, two chapters ago. In the Laplace domain, apply one, a Dirac impulse, compute V out and V out is a transfer function. In this case, we can obtain that with a voltage divider. V out, H of S is just that. You can simplify, manipulate that, and write it in that form. You observe that there is a pole at 1 over RC. Correct. There is no pole or zero and zero, so the entry on the left is horizontal, like so, and it takes a dive of the frequency 1 over RC. We are in front of a low pass filter. First order low pass filter to be sure. Oh, why do I write that the value of the attenuation is 0 decibels on the right? Oh, because when S J omega tends to 0, the transfer function's value, look at it, it tends to 1. And logarithm of 1 is 0. 0 decibels, right? Let's do that with numbers now. If the corner frequency 1 over RC is 20 radians per second. If we um, intersect the actual curve with the bottom of A max, we find what is omega P. A max has been given to us. Let's see how this proceeds. On the calculator, omega naught, the corner frequency is 20. We computed that before. The transfer function is um, 20 over S plus 20. We make S equal to J omega, and the equation that we need to solve is at one value of the frequency, the decibels of the transfer function is equal to negative 1.5 decibels. You say, why negative? Oh, because remember uh, that the top value of that curve is zero decibels. We saw that in the previous slide. So at what point in omega the value of the curve is negative 1.5 decibels, we solve for that. And we get that that happens at 12.85 radians per second. That is the value of omega p if a max is 1.5. If a max was 3 decibels, then omega p would be very close to omega naught to the corner to 20 radians per second. But that is with a max equal to 3 decibels. If a max is 4 decibels, then omega p would be closer to 25 radians per second. My point here is that omega p, the edge of the passband, depends on a max. Change a max, you change omega p. You change the bandwidth, you change the quality factor. Approximate cutoff. Again, the same concept. It is that important. If they don't give us a max, we use as omega p the value of the corner. That is the approximate cutoff frequency. But if they give us A max, 
then we have to intersect the bottom of a max with the actual curve to find omega p. Here is a top hat question for you to work on. For the filter in this figure, with the values are 20 ohms and C is 10 microfarads, if A max is 1.5 decibels, what is omega p? That is the question. What is omega p? You work on that. The actual answer should be the approximated corner is 5,000 radians per second. The edge of the passband uh, when A max is 1.5 decibels is 3,211 radians per second. You work on that and check them out. And this is the end of this very first third of the lecture. Thank you very much and I hope to meet you again in the next third.